Bismillahirrahmanirrahim my dear students today we will study livestock feeding standards so just to recap the things which you have already studied classification of livestock feeds and fodders so what kind of feeds and fodders we have available uh, first thing is uh, natural vegetation this is available in grasslands pastures trees and shrubs or bushes so this is natural vegetation available for animal feed then is cultivated feeds cultivated feeds one is fodders or forages this include green or succulent forage and then dry fodder green succulent fodder is fodder crops fodder crops are two types leguminous non leguminous in agriculture you have you should have studied about this then second is grasses mott grass and other grasses we can uh, cultivate then silage you have already idea of what silage is and then fodder trees and shrubs or bushes so there are trees which can be used for fodder as well as shrubs or bushes and the second option is dry fodder uh, one is straws or wheat straw rice straw we use it uh, for feeding livestock then stovers or stalks and then hay air dried fodder or forage so <clears throat> these are fodders then we come to concentrates uh, protein rich concentrates are oil cakes and animal products carbohydrate rich concentrates are grains millets and tubers and then moderate or both um, concentrates containing both protein and carbohydrate are grams pulses beans brands etc and there are supplements and additives which are minerals vitamins antibiotics etc so this is all pretty much all things which we use for feeding livestock there are some terms which you have already gone through nutrient are compounds in food or feed essential to life anything which supports life is called nutrient for example energy protein minerals and vitamins nutrient requirements this is the minimum amount of nutrients necessary to meet an animals to meet an animals need for maintenance growth reproduction lactation and birth ration it is the 24 hour feed allowance for an individual animal So now what are feeding standards these are tables stating the amount of various nutrients that should be present in the daily ration of different classes of livestock for optimum growth work and reproduction so these are the requirements of animals basically which must be met for optimum growth production and reproduction so these standards uh, should be reviewed revised every few years to make them up to date in describing nutritionally adequate ration so feeding standards so how we uh, set feeding standards first thing is we need to know what amount of feed animal would eat so we describe this thing through dry matter dry matter is feed residue left after all moisture or water has been removed by drying so if we take a feed sample and remove all water from it that becomes dry matter dry matter intake is the amount of moisture or water free feed or diet consumed and dry matter basis is used to compare nutrient composition of animal intake of feeds in a standardized fashion by eliminating differences in moisture content so we want to compare two three uh, forages or fodders we just dry them to eliminate the factor due to moisture or water and then we compare them on dry matter basis second is how much protein an animal would require so this is indicated by crude protein it is an estimate of total protein content of a feed determined by analyzing the nitrogen content of feed and multiplying the result by 6.25 so we take a feed sample we determine its nitrogen content then multiply it by 6.25 this becomes crude protein requirement of uh, crude crude protein uh, amount of that feed 
Crude protein includes true protein and other nitrogen containing substances such as ammonia, amino acids, nitrates, etc. How much energy an animal would require? This is the third thing we need to know and this is determined by TDN, Total Digestive and Nutrient, the energy value of feedstuffs. So TDN is comparable to digestible energy in accuracy. This is equal to digestive energy, energy which would be available for animal to do all his life functions. And digestible energy is already defined. You have an idea about it. The apparent energy that is available to the animal by digestion measured as the difference between gross energy of a feed and energy contained in animal feces, gross energy minus fecal energy. So now we uh, go to uh, the real thing, feeding standards, what feeding standards are, how they are set. I have uh, uh, quoted here one example of feeding standards. Uh, I am just giving of uh, three species. Uh, for instance, we have a sheep. She is lactating. Lactating means she is giving milk or uh, breastfeeding milk uh, uh, to her twin lambs. She has twin lambs. Her body weight is 40 kg. So what amount of dry matter intake she would need? That is 2.09. TDN energy is 1.45 kilograms, crude protein is 0.3 kilograms, calcium is 8.39 gram, phosphorus is 5.58 grams. Now let us take the example of a goat. She is late pregnant and she is pregnant with two with twin kids. She has two kids in her uterus. Her weight, body weight is 60 kilograms. Now what would be the standards of daily nutrient requirements of that animal that is dry matter intake is 1.95 TDN is 1.27 CP is 0.21 10 gram calcium 5 gram phosphorus and uh, last is cattle it is a mature cattle and lactating may it is giving milk but we are here I am here documenting the maintenance requirement the cattle or cow weight is 400 kilograms she needs 11.8 kilograms of dry matter intake on daily basis. She needs 3.13 kilograms of TDN. She needs 0.36 kilograms of crude protein. And she also needs 16 grams of calcium and 11 grams of phosphorus. So these standards are set by experts based on their knowledge of animal requirement and the composition of uh, feedstuffs. And this is usually published by NRC, NRC 1981, NRC 2006. So these are the standards set by animals, uh, set by NRC. These are basically American standards. Now, what are these standards are available for whole list of animals? We will not go into that much detail here. Uh, I, I'm just giving you an idea that what these standards are and how they are set. What are the issues with these feeding standards? Uh, local versus global standards. So standards made in Netherlands might not be applicable to standards in Rawalpindi, Islamabad or Faisalabad. Similarly, standards made in Australia. It is a tropical country, but still that may not apply equally to our local circumstances. So it is always suggested to make our own standards for our own animals, for our own circumstances. Distinction between tropical and temperate systems. So there is very difficult to define tropical and temperate in this changing climatic conditions. So climate of the world is changing. So we cannot precisely define right now what is tropical, what is temperate. Another definition is low input system and high input system. Low input system is production of animal is adjusted to the feed availability. Animal would produce according to the feed made available to that animal. And in high input system, we have a lot of feed and the feed is adjusted to the production level of animal. So we would decide according to the production of animal, how much feed animal is uh, in need of. So in near in real life, we these two systems do not exist in real real life situation. We uh, need to have a fine mixture of both the systems and then we need to decide our own standards. 
Another thing, another issue is grazing versus stall feeding. Uh, animals would be grazing, animals may be stall feeding. So in both these scenarios, when animal is going for grazing, it is very hard to define its requirement or its actual intake. So that becomes another issue with these standards. So we need to apply these standards very carefully and best is to develop our own standards, keeping in view of the requirement of our own breeds and our own uh, locally available feedstuffs. Thank you very much for your, your attention and if you have any question you can contact me via WhatsApp, telephone, email. Uh, thanks again.